Hello economics students. In this video, I lied in the last one, we've actually got two dot points to go. In this video, we're doing trade liberalization. Before we get too deep into this, let's think of what this word liberal means. If you're a liberal person, if you're a liberal business or a liberal boss, you're pretty open, you're pretty free. And that is exactly what trade liberalization means. It means to free trade or have open barriers or open borders to trade. We need to think about how trade liberalization impacts, as we have so often, Australia's international competitiveness, the allocation of resources, which is just a new one, from, uh, but is from microeconomics, so the efficiency of resource allocation, aggregate supply, our goals, and living standards. But we have to do it in the short term and the long term. And we have to know the different effects between the short term and the long term on all these factors I just mentioned. So what is free trade? Uh, over Australia's history, we haven't always been open to trade. We used to have what's called protectionism, where we protected, uh, we put barriers up to trade. We made it harder for foreign businesses to bring um, goods and services into Australia. And the way we do this is by taxing their imports. So it's a tariff is a tax on imports, or we had a quota, which limited the amount of goods and services they could bring into Australia, or we paid subsidies to local businesses. But over the last 50, 60, 70 years, we've gradually liberalized trade, we've freed it, and now we've removed those barriers and we've signed free trade agreements with countries around the world, which allows us to trade without any barriers. So in the short term, this is broadly a negative thing, right? Remember economists, we have to think about short-term, long-term effects. We have to weigh up the effects. But broadly speaking, in the short term, this will be bad, right? And the reason for that is that local businesses are suddenly exposed, even though it does happen gradually, they're exposed to competition from overseas. And that means that they struggle to survive. If they lose subsidies, if they're forced to compete with maybe cheaper, better quality producers overseas, they're either having to shut down or downsize. And that's bad for Australian jobs and bad for the Australian economy. So one of my favorite examples of this is Holden, the car manufacturer. I'm sure you know it if you don't Google it. Uh, and they manufactured cars in Australia for a very long time. But as we slowly move towards trade liberalization and we open up barriers and we stop subsidizing Holden and stop putting tariffs on BMW and Mercedes-Benz and Suzuki and Subaru and Kia and Hyundai and all the amazing cars we can buy in Australia now, as we started to bring those cars into Australia, Holden slowly was forced to downsize and they manufactured less and less cars. Now, of course, that's a bad thing in the short term because many people that worked at those plants lost their job. Many connected businesses who made parts for Holden, they had to shut down and they lost their jobs. And so that hurts the goal of full employment, right? The unemployment rate is going to go up in the short term. There's also a decrease in productive efficiency because all those labor resources are wasted while they're trying to retrain and find a new job or find a new industry. And that makes us less competitive as we lose that protection. So straight away, our costs of production go up because foreign tariffs are removed and our subsidies are lost. So all of a sudden, Holden cars become very expensive compared to a Tesla. So what happens to our other goals? Strong and sustainable growth is also negatively effect, affected because the slowdown in the economy in the short term will mean we don't reach our 3 to 3.5% uh, growth in real GDP target. Aggregate supply will also decrease and the capacity of the economy will, will decrease or the growth will slow. So aggregate supply won't be able to keep up with aggregate demand, perhaps. The one benefit is that free trade is bilateral or even multilateral, which means that it doesn't just benefit um, Australian consumers in Australia. We also get to buy cheaper goods from overseas, and that could help us achieve price stability or low and stable inflation. Now, in the long term, it's positive. Economists believe that trade liberalization is a good thing in the longer term. And they're willing to accept the short-term costs because as businesses adjust to the competitive forces from overseas, they have to be more innovative. They have to find ways to improve their productivity, get more out of their labor, get more out of their capital to maybe cut some dead weight, who, which is not required. That otherwise with subsidies and protection, 
they had no incentive or no pressure to innovate and improve their productivity. So in the longer term, they have to adjust if they want to survive. And even if Holden shuts down, all those workers, hopefully the majority of them have retrained and moved into other industries. There's even an old, um, well, not an old guy, but an old Holden engineer who works at my school, which I think is amazing, an amazing story. So those in the longer term, it'll improve productive efficiency as resources get reallocated towards their most productive use. Maybe we shouldn't have manufactured cars in Australia anymore anyway. It also will improve international competitiveness because as we innovate, as we improve productivity, as we get a better quality of product offering, we can compete with foreign businesses. Maybe not in the car industry, but maybe in other industries. This improves the capacity of the economy and helps us achieve our three macroeconomic goals. All right, now I didn't do living standards, but I know you can do that because you can go from what I've already talked about to living standards. Hopefully that helped you understand trade liberalization. See you in the next video, which is our last for VCE economics. Bye for now.